So, oh, you got real beer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Classy I wasn't, it's, fellow. Well, that's how I roll. I'm really conscious about the size of my everything in yeah. Japan. Yeah. Because I'm a real taste. malt liquor picker. Well, you know, amongst other things. Everybody wants to do the kampai. Pow! It's another episode of Talk and Taste. I am Max. I am Timothy. And we are coming at you from Tokyo, where today we're going to talk about something that really brings Japan and America together in a way. We are, and particularly, I would love to hear a little bit about some of the background that you have in baseball and stadium announcing. Now, you, for years, were the stadium announcer at one of the biggest Japanese baseball franchises, the SoftBank Hawks in Fukuoka. That's right, the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks, they recruited me off of the radio. I worked for them for six seasons, uh, going to the Japan Series, which is the Japan equivalent of the World Series, doing a couple of All-Star games, etc. And as far as I know, I'm the only foreigner who's done that job in Japan. And it was a lot of fun, but it did take some time getting used to. So I'm just going to ask Max, I mean, you're stepping out there in front of 40, 50,000? Uh, 38,000 okay. and, and something, yeah. 38,000 people and in Japanese, and you've got to basically be the hype man. You've got to get them excited about everything that's happening. Yes. That must have been pretty nerve-wracking when you first started. It's absolutely nerve-wracking. I mean, there's a lot to unpack mm. in that. But at the very end of the day, my philosophy was, as long as one of us is having fun, it's okay. So I came to it from the radio, mm -hmm. and in the radio I was used to just ad-libbing, right? Mm -hmm. just, just, yeah, sure, put me on the air, I'll say some stuff, mm -hmm. fine, we'll cut to a song, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of brought that attitude mm -hmm. to the baseball team as well, mm -hmm. and so when it was time for me to go out on the field in front of 38,000 people on opening day and work on the screen, that everything is backwards, mm -hmm. right? So if you do this, it does that on the screen, mm -hmm. and you hear yourself like a half a second later because mm -hmm. it echoes, so any mistake you made, you feel it twice. Mm -hmm. right it comes right back at you and I had a director right and my director would be just kind of off camera mm -hmm. which means like maybe 20 meters away from me or something mm -hmm. and we hadn't decided on any signals or mm -hmm. whatever and there's a language barrier between us so at some point I'm just going on talking about mm -hmm. stuff and making mistakes in Japanese whatever and he holds up this sign that says bus car and I'm like, what? We didn't talk about a bus wow. car. Bus car turns out it was the T-shirt cannon bazooka thing. The T-shirt cannon. That's bazooka. arguably one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. A T-shirt cannon. Can you actually is buy Is that the way you get dressed in the morning? It is. Can you buy those just at the, the shop? Or I, you, you, they're prob I'm sure on the dark web you can buy we, your T-shirt cannon. We should try and get one for this talk and taste uh, yeah. and show. Yeah, just shoot it at the internet. Well, that's probably not a good idea. But Off your balcony? Probably not a good idea either, but yeah. we should try and get one. Um, so, just quickly going back, I love what you said. Uh, as long as one of you uh, is enjoying yourself, that's the main thing. It's the philosophy I have for this show. Are you saying that you weren't enjoying yourself just now? So we're going to be tasting uh, some things. Now, yeah. they obviously relate to Japanese baseball. Now, Max, if yes. we were playing Family Feud, yeah. I want you to give me your, say, top four responses for what is imperative to have at Japanese baseball. Takoyaki. Good one, yes. That's like fried dough with uh, octopus in it. Um, no, but seriously, you need those, uh, the megahorn things. Okay. They have these, the, the things you wear around your neck and yes. you can shout into them. They're like mm. a plastic megaphone. You can beat them together. They're like mm. kind of baseball bats. And, and everybody in the uh, right stands, in the gaia, they do all these songs, right? So you definitely need those. You need your towel so you can whip your towel around. You need, uh, you need a, a great MC. You can't touch this. And you need a beer girl. Because you need to drink there when you you're go. having your takoyaki. Beer girls. But uh, it's certainly one of the highlights because when you're at a Japanese baseball game, you probably need to drink some form of alcohol. And why you're not you're cheering. Beer? Like you're cheering the whole time. Katobase uchikawa. And yeah. you're, you're cheering hard. You're cheering very hard. So with that in mind, yeah. uh, what have I got for us today? Three of the most popular Japanese beers at the baseball. Uh, and here we go. So, oh, you got real beer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Classy I wasn't, it's, fellow. Well, that's how I roll. Uh, so we have the obviously the the very well known Asahi Super Dry. It's a classic. Kirin uh, Ichiban Shibori. Uh, another, you know, really popular beer. Let's call it. Um, and then we have the Ebisu. Which, I love uh, the Ebisu. Well, we'll find out today when we do. Because I'm a real malt liquor picker. Well. 
you know, amongst other things. So let's get stuck into the tasting. And uh, maybe you've tried some of these beers before. We'd love to hear uh, which one of these three is your favorite. So let's start off with Super Dry. They appear pretty much all the same. Japanese big beer is pretty standard. There is actually kind of a cottage craft beer industry in Japan. But at some point in Japanese history, according to Japanese law, you had to be producing like 1,600 hectoliters or something. So that cut all the little guys out. Sorry, have you jumped ahead to Max Fax? Uh, I like to bring my facts in. Super Dry. Yeah. So this is, you know, obviously one of the most well-known Japanese beers all around the world. It's typical of a Japanese style uh, big beer. It's very light, it's very crisp. Into the tasting. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's, it's very fresh, it's very crisp. Um, yeah, not too hoppy on the nose. Um, yeah, I always find there's not a great deal of complexity with Super Dry. It's more of a beer that you want to chill really, really cold, have it in maybe a big, you know, uh, Nama glass, a big uh, a beer glass. Mm. And it's good for things like Izakai. It's good for the baseball. It's good on a really hot day. Got that. Yeah, it has like a kind of a bitter freshness to it, especially less uh, on the nose mm. and much more kind of on the palate. So let's move into the Ichiban Shibori, the Kirin. Now, here's an interesting uh, reason why some of these beers came about. Back in the 80s, Kirin actually used to have more than 50% market share of the, uh, the beer market in Japan until uh, in about 1987, Asahi created the Super Dry and swept the market. They, it was a huge success. And then a lot of the other beer makers tried to come in and make their own dry beer, but it just wasn't as popular. So since then, uh, Super Dry has, has been sort of the clear leader in this category. And Kiden had uh, some good success in the early 90s by bringing out the Ichiban Shibori, uh, which as you can see... It's much fruitier, isn't it? I don't yeah. wonder if that's maybe a different strain of yeast or... Well, there's, there's some more richness in it. I find it's got like a, a more of an approachable... I don't want to go as far as to say honey, but it has this sort of nice, round, almost slight fruitiness to it. Whereas the Azahi is that really like, you know, fresh, acidic. This is a much rounder beer. It's a little bit, I guess, sweeter in, in perception on the palate. Um, and uh, once again, a great contrast, but still a very light and very drinkable beer. Really it, good Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very light, uh, fruity, as you said. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of maybe, maybe wheatiness to it. More like a kind of a, a German wheat beer. Sure. Let's move on to the Ebisu. And this is obviously um, a very premium level beer. These are all premium. Ebisu sits in that slightly higher category in terms of price point. And I guess image-wise as well, the perception of Ebisu is, is it's sort of the premium beer in Japan. I guess uh, you might have a Max Fax for us about Ebisu. Max Fax! Well, Ebisu, as you, as you know, I mean, you mentioned about it being premium and it's in the gold bottle. Of course, the character on Ebisu is one of the uh, Shichifukujin, which is the seven gods of luck. And uh, he's kind of the god of, I believe, kind of wealth, uh, commerce, trade. That's why he's a portly guy with a beard, big old earlobes, mm -hmm. which I think usually signify that you're going to become wealthy, right, if you have big earlobes. And uh, is, has a tie, the uh, sea bream, the red mm -hmm. snapper fish, etc. So uh, drink it in wealth and to health. Great beer. I mean, it's obviously a little bit fuller bodied. It's actually based more on a German uh, beer style than the others. I mean, it's got a richer, I guess, a, even a maltier uh, taste as well. Um, it's much more mouth filling. Um, the finish is, is quite a lot longer. There's a little bit more complexity in it for mine. There are, there are like fresh hoppy notes in the finish mm. of this, but definitely it's more folded into the overall complexity mm -hmm. and maltiness. So um, there's our three beers, all fantastic, all uh, really different. What I did, Matt, is uh, just for you um, because I know that maybe at times you're a little bit conscious uh, about your the size of your hands. I'm really conscious about the size of my everything in Japan. Yeah. Uh, so what I've done is I've gone and got you a couple of special little uh, special beers, uh, same beers. Okay. But um, here, uh, this is um, this is a beer that I got for you. It's it's also a super dry. Yeah. Great thing about these cans um, is that uh, when you're holding them. Uh, as you can see, it makes you look like you've got absolutely giant hands. This is... Do you think we should send some of these to Trump? Well, it's only 135 mils, so it's very easily uh, managed. What would that be in the imperial system? 40 ounces? What, what do no, you say? I don't really know anymore. Yeah. Um, I think it's five stones. But if you just look at that, how cute is that? That is not the cutest thing ever. And. Kieran. A little Another little, little Kieran, Kieran as well. So uh, for all of you out there who are thinking, oh, I'd love to try those beers, but they're a bit too big. 
Um, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there. Well, if you come to Japan, you've got an option. Get the miniature versions. Yeah, this is like playing the ukulele. It just makes you feel like a powerful giant. That's holding true. a guitar yeah. or a beer. Now you might wonder why in the world do they sell these things? Mm. I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous size, right? It's not. It's not a breakfast power drink. Mm. When you ask Japanese people, they actually say like, "Oh, it's good for the kampai," because there are many people here who who don't actually drink kampai or hold their... the cheers. The cheers. Okay. Yes, thank you. The kampai, the cheers, is a really important demarcation of when the evening begins, and you can kind of start drinking, and you can relax, and you can communicate more, and have more fun, etc. So. Everybody wants to do the kampai, mm. but if you don't drink that much, mm. what do you do? Well, you can get a teeny yeah, tiny mini can, guys, mini and guys. You don't, you're not left out. That's true. That's true. I mean, you could probably drink a case of those, you know, if, if uh, you're on it. Uh, in I don't know if you could. And, That's yeah, a little bit of a lightweight. I, I probably couldn't. Let me finish off with uh, tea cubed. Oh, uh, tea cubed. Everybody's favorite. Uh, Timothy's top tips. Why not the next time uh, you have a, a beer glass or a, a beer stein lying around, rinse it out with water while it's still a little bit wet, throw it in the freezer. Throw it in the freezer and then when you want to crack yourself a nice beer, take it out of the freezer, tip it straight in and you have got an absolutely chilled glass in which to enjoy your fresh beer. That is Timothy's top tip for today. It's like owning your own brew pub. Without owning your own brew pub. Thanks for joining us for Talking Taste. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Goodbye. Fat ear got a fortune in luck. If you drink a few cans, well, you won't give a fuck. If Tokyo Dome is just a bit too far, chill your glass in the freezer just like at the bar. Talk and taste.